your book is published and you've had an exciting launch phase, you now turn your attention to the longer term and the costs that you'll likely incur running your book business. Now, there are usually maintenance costs to be aware of, and yes, sure, you can do probably almost all, if not all of it, for free. For the majority of us, though, there's going to be likely a cost involved to maintaining the book business. Um, as usual, if you have any costs that you're aware of that maybe I haven't covered, please drop them in the comments so we can all learn and grow by learning from each other. Now, there's quite a bit to go over, and I don't want to waste your time, so smash that like button like you're smashing avocados for guacamole, and let's jump in. So, obviously, there's the author website if you have one. Um, there may be hosting services, for example, there may be updates that you may want to do. Um, all this stuff can cost money, obviously, if you do use the free stuff. So you can do the updates yourself, you know, if you have the expertise or if you're willing to learn, no problem. Um, but there's stuff like um, the hosting stuff. So if you use free um, kind of hosting services, usually there's going to be ads on your website. So <laughs> it's going to look a little less professional, in my opinion, but that's kind of a your choice kind of thing, you know. So there's at least one author website cost for starters. And there's email services as well, email service providers, uh, maintenance costs. If you're growing your email list, there's going to be a point where you, you probably have to pay for an email service provider to send emails out. There's obviously other benefits for that, you know. There may be automation, segmentation, and, and more that the email service providers can, can provide. Um, now, can this be done for free? Yes. Um, that it, it is possible, usually when the email list is, is kind of small, but once you get into the larger email list size, you know, I think you'll probably find it's worth paying for an email service provider. So there's other like services or subscriptions that may be like annual or monthly fees that you want to keep. So for example, there may be Story Origin, Book Funnel, Canva, Adobe, um, Book Brush, you know, all these kind of, you know, subscription stuff that you may want to keep. Like personally, just a side note, I, I prefer one-off purchases because you know, if I can help it, sometimes it's cost prohibitive. But that's just my personal preference because I don't like to, you know, keep paying until I, I'm, I'm dead, you know what I mean? <laughs> I kind of like to pay it as a one-off and then uh, move on with life, really. Um, so yeah, make sure you keep an eye out for the subscription services that you're paying for. So that's, that's definitely a cost you need to be aware of. Now, in terms of marketing, this is going to be like an ongoing, you know, thing. Um, so there are obviously marketing for free, so you can use social media, you can post it on your own, um, that's fully free, so you can create, you know, um, in, um, like illustrations, graphics or something, yourself for free, um, but you could hire all this out, right, you could hire that out, um, you could even get like a social media marketer to do stuff for you, or to help do stuff for you, um, but that, that obviously comes with a cost. There's also marketing with ads, so you could be doing... Um, for example, social media ads like book, uh, sorry, like, um, you know, Facebook ads or something like that. But there's also ads in general. So if you want to run ads on places like Amazon or BookBub, Google, you know, or, or anywhere else, really, um, it's likely to cost some money. So marketing and promotion does, you know, incur costs. So depending on how you want to run your book business um, in the long term, that is something to be aware of. And of course, one of my favorites, book promo sites. Depending on which ones you use, some are free, you know, for sure. Uh, but most of them carry a cost. I, I am a big fan of book promo sites, but I, I don't do it every single day or every single week. I do kind of cycle it at least, well, you know, mi minimum time between um, times I use it would be like book promo sites for every quarter or half yearly or even yearly. I've seen people do it a bit more often, but my sweet spot has typically been kind of quarter to six monthly to give you know the platform enough time to maybe cycle through some readers so readers come and go as well and hopefully you get new readers in the next kind of round that you use book promo sites so don't do it like don't run it today and then run another one tomorrow because you're gonna get probably the same um, readers right so you have to leave enough time for new readers to come in okay so that's the that's another cost that you may need to keep in mind if you're doing marketing and promotion for the long term. If any of this is resonating with you, give that like button a cute panda cuddle. Now this one may not occur to you immediately, but if you want to create more formats of your book, so maybe you've got an ebook and paperback, but you want to create the format for an audiobook or hardcover or something, then you're gonna have to, you know, incur some cost for that. You know, depending on how elaborate you want to get, the the cost can vary right? So certainly budget and save up for it if you if you can. And but this is one of those things that you have to decide 
when is appropriate for you to choose the next format of your book. Similar to that one is changing covers or maybe doing a second or a third edition of your book. You're going to need to budget for this. Um, it's basically like a shorter process, but it still needs a, a, a process, right? So you got to get edits done, you got to get the covers done, you may have to reformat the interior, you know, so it's kind of like a, it's practically like a new book, except the the editing may not be as extensive because it's already been edited once, like properly, you know? Um, so there may even be a new book launch or a cover reveal and that kind of thing to get your audience excited, you know? So, you know, if you have any like additional editions of books, then that's something you want to budget for. Along the marketing and promotions idea, there's giveaways and cross promotions. Um, these sometimes cost money to participate in. Um, depending on what kind of giveaway, you know, th there's usually a cost. So if you're giving away an ebook, it's going to be free because, you know, you can just send someone the, uh, the, the file for free. Um, but if there's like a physical copy or something like that, or there's some merch involved, there's going to be prints, uh, printing of those, you know, things um, that, that cost something. And then there's shipping costs as well. Right, so make sure you take those into consideration. I haven't done this myself, but translations, if there's gonna be a translation thing, kind of like a similar idea to a different format of a book, if you have a translation of your book, or books, um, then there may be a cost involved to get that done, you know, because it's gonna be essentially a new book, you know, and that's a whole process for a new book again, right? So consider that before you jump into to translating your book. And also, is there a market where you wanna do that translation for? You'll probably want to verify that a little bit before you jump in. If you do any author events, you know, so you're going to probably want some author copies for signings or maybe to post it to fans um, or merch that you want to have along with you. Um, or maybe setting up your author um, shop, you know, in-person table, you know, that, that may have some kind of costs involved. Um, so, for example, bigger posters, um, some kind of artwork or something of your books, you know, that all kind of, you know, it adds up. You know, there are costs to those things. So um, there's also going to be travel costs if you're going anywhere. Like ob obviously virtually, if you're doing a virtual author event, that's going to be, you know, cheaper because there's no travel. But if there is travel involved, that's going to be another uh, cost you want to keep an eye on for. Now, there's this one's a little out there. It's potential legal costs. And I don't mean in terms of like you getting sued, although that is a potential as well. So <laughs> make sure you keep that in mind. But um, if there's anything that may crop up, for example, you're trying to take down pirates who've um, pirated your books or you're seeking legal advice for, for whatever reason um, or maybe you want to now register a copyright potentially now so that in future if you want to seek damages against anyone who's stealing your intellectual property you know that's something to discuss with a lawyer or maybe it's just a case of licensing your work you know for films or or whatever else you, you may want to seek legal advice so legal costs are something to, to kind of keep in mind and you know, maybe get a, get a few quotes to see how much that those may cost and go from there. But yeah, definitely budget for that for sure. And finally on my list, I've got software or app costs. So I, for example, I use Publisher Rocket and there's an affiliate link for my keyword research. So I use Publisher Rocket because I, I don't really want to pay anyone else to do it. I do it myself and I do it every so often so that I can update for example, the KDP seven backend keywords to see uh, whether um, they need updating. So some sometimes it doesn't, but you know sometimes it does because you know people search for different keywords and that may need you know obviously updating. And then I, I obviously you have other tools. Some are free, um, but 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 like Publisher Rocket is the one I use for keyword research. So you may have other you know software or apps that you want to keep um, that may have some kind of cost. It may be a one-off cost. It may be a subscription cost, um, but either way, you got to make sure you plan for those, okay? So if you're working on your manuscript and you want some pointers, I've got a playlist to help you finish that writing that book, so click over here. Or if you've got a complete book already written and you want to learn how you can get authentic book reviews, I've got you covered with this video right here. By the way, don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already.